morning, however, um, as Roland has stepped away for a moment, he'll be back after a big issue, and then we'll receive more of you live on air. So when you come in, you'll be live on television for the world to know the good work you're doing and also encourage other people to come through. Now, we're going to be talking um, to some of our favorite gentlemen who often come into the studios for big issue. We have already seated a full house, Pius Enam Hajide, CEO of the National Youth Authority. Pius, how are you doing? Hey, you're well, welcome you. to the show. Good to see you, you outside. Thank you. You thank look you. so much better outside. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, it's a nice setup. I commend it's you. It's a nice guys. setup. Yeah, yeah. The, the sunlight is doing all of us a lot of good. Also, we have Bernard Mona, former chairman of the People's National Convention. Bernard, how'd you do? How do you do? Great to have you. Good to see yeah, you. Welcome to the show. You are always smiling. Yes, I am. We are grateful to God for life. And then we have Malik Basintali, Deputy Communications Officer, NDC. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Why is it that my greetings were generalized? I mean, after my introduction, you said, gentlemen, how are you? I mean, if you ask me, how Malik, I'm how are you? Like you did to Pius. Malik, how are you? Tell me I look better outside, too. How are you? Yeah, you, you look very nice good. outside. I think we all look nice outside. The sun is good for us. You told only Pius, you didn't tell Bernard, you didn't tell myself. Malik, what are you doing? Even if you skip Bernard, at least tell me. <laughs> Anyway, good morning. Malik, and you look very nice. Great, it's great, great to have great, you. Great. Thanks, thanks. You're welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So today we're going to be talking about two things. Well, we'll very briefly talk about Professor Stephen Adair's government corruption allegations and the EOCO investigations and all of the news and um, updates that are coming from there. If you recall, about four days ago, Professor Stephen Adair, in an exclusive interview with TV3, made an allegation, corruption allegation, about happenings in the roads and transport ministry. Also, more importantly, I believe this morning, we're going to be talking about increasing relief support. Um, all of us here on this table have been uh, to various um, of the relief and the, the various camps in the Volta region and other regions that have been very badly affected by the Akosobo Dam spillage. We'll share some of our personal experiences as well as um, what we think, in our opinion, are the things that we can do as a nation and as individuals to help our brothers and sisters who have been displaced. So first, I'd like us to take a look at just a small bite from that interview with Professor Stephen Adai. The former rector of Gimpa, Professor Stephen Adai, alleged the high levels of corruption by appointees of the current administration. This road contract will be given to you, provided you put one million up front, or not that when you get your money. Then, and this is what Akufuado must be thinking about, and if he knows about it, must be ashamed of, that now his people demand from you a certain amount before you be considered for the job. Why? Because then when you, they get it, whether you, the government pays you or not, they have gotten their money. As if people are in a hurry to loot the country before the end of Akufuadu's term. He acknowledged the possibility of a rebound, but also warned that the journey would be challenging. One of the greatest disappointments of uh, Nane Okufuado's regime is that, honestly, he raised the hope of Ghanaians. Ghanaians expected that we had gotten the leader with a vision, with the charisma, with the determination. And it seems if he doesn't redeem himself in the next 14 months, he will go down in history of the, one of the most disappointing leaders. And what the co corruption, the arrogance, the thing that there is, Ghana is for them, and that, you know, without them, Ghana would not be there, even think, some of them thinking that they should tell us who should be our next president. God forbid. He questioned government's reluctance to address the issue of brain drain, which he believes has led to a crisis in the health and financial sectors. The nurses and the teachers who constituted about 75% of public service will go for loans. And because they were public servants, it was assured. Now they are run away and they can't pay. So I have to chase them to London, to America, and that thing. So the small banks, I know one which has about 7 million Ghana cities, they are chasing, they have to write off. He anticipated that citizens will hold leaders accountable to promote growth and development. 
So that was a video, um, a small bite from an interview by TV3, exclusive interview with Professor Sivna Dai, where he made these allegations. The Economic and Organized Crimes Office has since said that it's set to investigate these corruption allegations into the award of contracts at the Roads Ministry. So we're going to start with that, gentlemen, um, very briefly, like we all promised each other. And then we'll go, you and I, all of us. And then we will um, go into the matter of the day, which I believe is a, a big matter of national concern now. Relief items for our brothers and sisters in the very badly hit area. So I think I'll start with you, uh, Malik. You, you've seen this interview. Use your microphone, yes. I mean, I'm so used to I know. <laughs> the, the mic. And, I mean, I have. And um, very, very, very unfortunate revelations there. First, it's important to state who Professor Ade is. Mm -hmm. Prof as a statesman, regardless whatever his views may be, has served even as rector of Gempa. He served as an appointee of this government. He served on the Finance Advisory Board. He served as a chairman of the Ghana Revenue Authority. Yeah. And I remember the day he was sworn into office, his standards were not left out. His integrity and moral values were stated explicitly. And I think that, I mean, in all of this, we must appreciate that and know the point to which it comes from. It's also important that we avert our minds to the fact that whoever has resigned from this current administration have said similar things from Martin Amidu to Prof. Frimpon Boateng to, I mean, Prof. Adair and many other people have repeatedly stated concerns of corruption, have repeatedly stated concerns of arrogance of power, have repeated stated concerns of lack of vision, and then incompetence on the side of this administration. From, if you listened, and I'm glad that this expose, this, in fact, this discussion was conducted by this media house. And so to quote verbatim, Prof made assertions to the fact that President Akufuado lacks charisma of a leader, he lacks vision of a leader, and there is no direction to this country. And for the next 14 months or so, if he does not redeem his image in this country, he will go down as the worst president ever in the Republic of Ghana. It's also important that we state the cases he has cited of corrupt practices. And you see, I feel sad that every now and then, there are traces of similar instances of corrupt discussions unraveled by people who leave this particular administration, from investigative pieces to former appointees and what have you, if you remember. And I want us to avert our minds so that we can have some, I mean, uh, inductive reasoning with regards to this discussion. When Nyan Techi's expose was brought forth, Nyan Techi, who was a very good friend to Mr. Kufado, stated clearly on tape to the people he was calling that bring two million, bring one million dollars, and we get all the contracts in this country. In fact, if we give President Akufuado three million, he will be in my pocket and all road contracts will be awarded to us. That was Nyan Techi's piece. Till date, no decision has been taken, no finality has been made in that particular matter. Number two was Alistair Matthias, a gold mafia. In fact, a criminal so long as the standards of Africa are concerned. Stated in real terms that President Akufuado, should he be given 200,000, 300,000, that all road contracts will be given to you. Mind you, they spoke about road contracts, they spoke about one million, and they spoke about President Akufuado. And he stated that in real terms. The presidency promised to sue him. Till date, now, nah, we haven't heard of a single writ filed against Alistair Matthias. Because whatever he was saying there was true and was emphatic. He stated in real terms. In fact, your media house was threatened. Then finally, we now hear Prof. Ade also repeating what we've been hearing over time. And sadly, he stated that President Akufuado was aware of it and is so disappointed that he does nothing about it. You see, the rate and speed at which corruption is thinking at the presidency, around the presidency, especially when it's got to do with contracts, is embarrassing. And I think that as a people and as a youth coming up, the earlier we condemn all the, the, state, the, the 
tasteful acts of the presidency, the better for all of us. Because mind you, there are many businessmen today who, as a result of government contracts, employ many youth of this country. There are many businessmen today whose, I mean, people whose livelihoods depends on the contracts they make. And now, if sadly, you have to cough out about one million before you get a contract. I, I, I feel that the country is, is, is being ditched in tatters. And if you listen, if you listen to Prof. Adesh, he made emphasis to the part that they have finished eating all the meat and they want to clear their bones before they leave office. He says they are soaked in corrupt practices as if there is no tomorrow, as if they don't care about this nation, as if they don't care whether there are people still living in this country or not. And, and, and the man listening to him, look, I could feel that he had to resign. Remember that when he resigned from the advisory board, he stated that he was resigning for personal reasons and that at the right time, he would be speaking. Little did we know that the man resigned simply because there was corruption choking. If you remember, similarly, when Martin Amido resigned, in fact, he spoke about same corrupt practices at the presidency to the but extent that for the first time... isn't it interesting that we time, only hear about these things yeah, after they resign? Yeah, it is important. It is only a crocodile that will come out from water and tell you how a fish looks like. Yes, but while so he was in the water, he couldn't do or say anything. He could, he, of course. And what, what took him so long? Because whilst he was in the water, he was being classified as an aquatic animal too. So once he's out of the water, he has to tell us what indeed is beneath the water and why we should never trust those people in that particular water. And I think that is just fair. Martin Amidu, for the first time in the Republic, named the president as the mother serpent of all snakes. He said he was the mother serpent of corruption in this country. And now you and I must be worried because many of these discussions on go, uh, or usually take place on your media outlet. And you listen to the people verbatim. Frimpon Boatin's expose was made on your media outlet. Prof. Adair, again, was interviewed and stated face to face. And I've said well. that these are not I mean, common people, I beg your pardon, yeah. out there who are making these allegations. Mm -hmm. These are distinguished statesmen, and I think that it should be a matter of concern to every Ghanaian that on repeated basis, President Kufuado's name, if it is not being mentioned in Galamse terms, it is being mentioned in contracts where you have to pay bundles. And we have caught him. In fact, we've seen it on tape. Right, where $40,000 was even taken in a brown envelope with his two hands. At least and in so, this particular case, uh, we know uh, it, 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 it remains an allegation. Absolutely. Uh, from a state's yeah, man. It remains an allegation. And, and, and we, Yoko is set absolutely. to investigate these allegations. And, we, and then we will know for sure exactly what happened and whether these allegations look, can be substantiated. I, I know many, I'll, I'll just land on that. I know many now. allegations, many investigative pieces have seconds. gone, I mean, unseen. Uh -huh. There are even reports of corrupt practices that today you and I never had the opportunity of scrutinizing. Even though we may not have full confidence in this particular investigative piece, as one, they will not cooperate, and President Kufuado, as usual, who is the chief murder clearing agent, will clear them. We will get to the bottom of it, and we wish to remind them that crime has no expiry date in this country. We will definitely get to the bottom of it. Well, um, now, good morning to you and my colleagues and our cherished viewers. I'd like to begin by commending TV3 for your efforts to collaborate uh, with the state in its attempt to mitigate the sufferings of our brothers and sisters affected by the spillage of the VRE dam. The impacts are dire. I'm aware that uh, in the next session of the conversation, we'll be looking at that in greater detail. And it is for that reason that you have brought us outside of the studio uh, ordinarily would have been in the studios. And I think that I uh, would want to commend you greatly. And I'd rather that we focus our attention on the issues that matter to the good people of our country. And I have monitored New Day. My view is that New Day is elevated beyond a mere political platform where empty rhetorics and uh, political slogans and chants uh, that are aimed at exciting probably our base and exciting ourselves are shouted. And I also thought that you brought up a very, very important topic for conversation. Uh, regrettably and unfortunately, but akin of my uh, brother Basintali, he decides to turn it into a political rally and goes on 
ranting and, and mentioning uh, things that are not even related to the matter at issue. First of all, let me state that um, it is important that when allegations are made, and the word is allegations, it is important that steps are taken to thoroughly investigate those allegations. This is not the first time we are seeing something like this. I remember in the case when the former president, John Dramani Mahama, was accused of the Ford scandal by a journalist who did excellent work at the time, Manasseh Azuri. It was supposed to have been properly investigated by the relevant agencies of state. Again, even when allegations were made of that same man, the former president Mahama, his involvement in the unfortunate demise of the former president, he himself uh, uh, complains to the relevant authorities of state to get the matter interrogated. So your I point can give is you a long list. Now, the same leverage that you gave to Basintali, I will pray you to give me that. I watched you listen in absolute quiet when he went on and on. I will expect that the same privileges are accorded to me as well. I'm, I'm so only I'm asking saying that, what your well, point is. Well, if you listen to me, you understand my point. And I'm saying that when allegations are made, whether without basis, whether unfounded, the thing to do is to have not politicians, not babies with sharp teeth, but the agencies of state with the competencies and the resources to interrogate the matter. Have them look at it. And I'm saying that, for the record, in this instant matter, this is an allegation that has been made by somebody uh, who is being extolled. I know Professor Adai, Adai former uh, rector of Gimpa, very respectable person. But I've listened to him, and what I see is our grips. And that is why it was important, the question you asked. Why now? Why after the resignation? At the time you had access, you were no mean a person than the chairman of the GRA governing board. You had direct access to His Excellency the President. You had direct access to the ministers responsible. And it was important that if you noticed that something was going wrong, you talked about it. And it's the, sa the same can be said, Prof Professor Frimpon Boating, and I do not think that we want to build a country where we feed on the sentiments of bitter people, people with sour grips, people who think that they cannot make way for others. This is a country of 31 million people. There are many other persons who are equally as qualified as Professor Adair and Professor Frimpon Boating and the likes, who probably may even be more qualified in the sense of entitlement that some feel they have, that when they are asked to make way for others, then they get bitter and they start cooking up and making up stories. Stories that clearly to any level-headed human being does not even make any sense. And I commend the Ministry of Roads and uh, Transport or Highways that they have taken the steps to have these matters properly interrogated. When in the case of Professor Bifrobo that in that Basintelli, the NDC Basintelli was clearly excited about. When he was asked to assist in police investigations so that evidence can be unraveled, his comments were that he is not an investigator, that the forests are there, going to the forests. But you were the one who was making the allegation. And any person who is interested in justice knows that he who alleges must prove you have the evidence. You bring it out. You don't now recoil and say that you are not a police officer and that the forests are there. You can go into the forest. Again, I have listened to Prefond Boateng. I don't see any substantial, even premier face that has been made. You say that when well, the matter of when before road contract, the con contracts are given, people pay $1 million. Pe who paid $1 million to whom? I think that you should be able to have these kinds of answers to give to us. But in any case, if it was about allegations, the former president, Jerry John Rawlings, what did he say about some of the appointees of the NDC at the time? 
that they counted millions of dollars over the night to buy houses. That is the former president, the founder of the NDC, accusing operatives of the NDC. Are we supposed to take it line sick and hook without any investigations? When he said that $3 million and over were given by relatively young people to individuals in cash, and those amounts were counted over the night. Are we supposed to take them line hook and sinker? When, Professor, when Mr. Mahama was accused in the Airbus scandal that he took monies and that there were allegations that he, as vice president, was being investigated by his president, Professor Mills, very shortly before the unfortunate death, are we supposed to believe it, line hook and sinker? I believe that we ought to interrogate those matters. We ought to investigate them. But if the suggestion from Basintelli is that once it is said, let us believe it, then I sh he should be the first person telling us that Mr. John Dramani Mahama is a criminal because allegations have been made. That is the position that Basintelli is now advocating for on this platform, and I disagree. And so must it be for everybody. Baseless allegations have been made, but the good thing about uh, His Excellency Akufado is that he's not fighting corruption from the studios with microphones shouting slogans. So he's putting monies, he's putting resources in the anti graft agencies. Check the number of re uh, the, the, the budget allocations. In fact, the, the office of the special prosecutor was brought by him. And he appointed a known NDC, somebody who rose to the level of running mate of the NDC. As special prosecutor, this cannot be somebody who is interested in corruption. How would you do that? Why would I be corrupt and appoint Basintali to come and watch over corruption? I should be crazy. But the only reason why I would do that is that I am genuinely at heart committed to fighting corruption. And that is a good photo for you. Every little investigation, whether uh, pointless, whether baseless, uh, Afku Fadu will make sure that it is properly investigated. But why do you blame him if you guys run around and make baseless allegations and the president have them uh, investigated and there is no merit in it? Then you turn around to say he's clearing agent. What should he do? Because of your baseless accusations, he should send people to jail? Evidence is the name of the game. If you sit in the comfort of your, your house or on, on TV and out of just political expediency, you shout, okay, now he's a criminal. So because of that, now she hang. Who does that? What civilized, decent country will proceed along those lines? That is not what we signed for when we adopted the 1992 constitution. So please, I believe that Professor Adai's allegations, I don't see any merit in it. They are mere allegations. They have to be investigated. Unlike the NDC, where judges make proclamations that this is a group that creates, that loots and shares. This is a statement of a judge in court. So it is not a mere allegation. The fallout of the Airbus scandal. So some these allegations are, are mere these allegations are not, and others are Absolutely. Not. That you cannot I think equate. Both the arguments that you have made, all allegations are mere but the, allegations. But the great loot and share was not an allegation. It's a judgment of a, a judge no, sitting that, in court. That is, cannot be a judgment. It is. I've never read the judgment. It's, a, it's in the judgment of a judge. A statement. If of a judge in court, presiding, no giving judgment, judgment, giving a ruling. There is the ruling, yes. and then there are other statements that are made. It is a part of the ruling. So that is it. In any you, case, you know what? the because Airbus we agreed, scandal, the because, Airbus because scandal, because we agreed the Airbus, that we are not going the, to go the Airbus, on. But I want you, yeah. the Airbus scandal, the Airbus scandal, again, these are proclamations agreed, by a competent court of jurisdiction. Because we agree that we will not spend too much time. allegations by Basintali. Because we agree that we will not spend too much time but on this topic. You, Yes, you did. We agree that we'll not spend too much time on it. So, so, so let's. Let, so, so we are going to reduce. What, what sense of time do you have? We're, we're have going to reduce um, the back and forth, and then just each of us have the opportunity to speak once, and we'll move on. So, 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 Bernard. Please, Bernard has the floor now. Let's listen to Bernard. And after Bernard has spoken, we will move on to the other matter because together we agreed that we'll keep it short. All right, Bernard. You let's, have let's to listen respond. to you. you. Don't run this show. You can't make these allegations. Bernard, let's listen to you. When you were all right, Pius. It's all right. It's okay. When you were talking, Malik, I, I, kept my I will take your microphone. You all right. Go. Bernard, let's go. I'll respond to them. First. You can't run your mouth if you're an ally. And it will go free. First. Use this one. Use mine. First, let me say unequivocally. 
Ms. Reckoner. But I'm very surprised at the turn of events from the Ministry or the Minister for Roads. Somewhere on the 22nd, 23rd of August 2023, this same minister had the capacity to tell the whole world that there are thieves and corrupt people within his ministry. I'm sure you remember the story. Now, nah? I'm sure you remember the story that the Minister for Roots is on record on the 22nd, 23rd of August, 2023, to have pronounced that there are thieves and corrupt people in his ministry. This is the minister. I didn't make those pronouncements. And at that time, my call was that if the minister is aware, and by the way, he is a lawyer, that there are thieves and corrupt people within his ministry, it means that the minister has incontrovertible evidence to come to that conclusion. And so the minister simply, at the time, needed to submit the evidence of those thieves, those corrupt officials within the ministry, to the appropriate investigating authorities to deal with the matter. So if Professor Stephen Ade comes out to say that road contracts are being awarded and in some instances you pay over a million, has he said anything different from what the minister himself had said? He has not. So where is this rush trying to say that the ministry has run to Iyoko? On the announcement of Stephen Ade, where is it coming from? It's evident that our minister simply does not understand the time in which we are. Listen. Listen. So many things have happened in this country. You remember the same Manasseh as that was like in the fourth scandal by our boss, because he's the head of youth in this country. I'm saying that cited by you. You cited, you cited it. When I'm talking, listen. Let's come back to the The fourth scandal that was cited by him. Mm -hmm. The story was done by Manasseh Azuri. Mm -hmm. Manasseh Azuri lived in this country peacefully. Uh, no, that's not correct. Can I make my submission? That's not correct. I, I was here. Yeah, I was here when you were. He lived in this country peacefully. No institution whatsoever went after him. The same Manasseh Azuri spoke about the militia in the castle and told us about what the Amodus Oprandi was. At the time the president was seen talking about vigilante groups, we had vigilante within the presidency, right? Manasseh Azuri reported. Manasseh Azuri had to flee this country. The national security minister, himself knowing the danger, decided that they would give him police and security to protect him. Listen, and Manasseh said that that was even to expose him more because as a journalist, he didn't need that kind of thing to be able to do his job. What was actually happening was that now it means that anywhere he's going, he can actually be noted because the police uh, sent somebody to come and be protecting him, which he did not like. Wow. It took the West Media Foundation for West Africa to take Manasseh Azure out of Ghana so that he can have his life. Otherwise, his life was under threat. There are many other journalists whose lives have come under threat. Some have died in the course of this within the same republic. Bios, not to put you on the spot, but there are several scandals that Mr. President has not, or in his quest, has quickly run to come and say that investigations have been done. You recall the issue surrounding the Ministry of Youth and Sports when Pius was Deputy Minister? 
surrounding the Australia visa scandal, Pius, my brother, was put on the spot. And they were, he was suspended. Soon after the suspension, the president said that the investigation says that Pius is clean. Can I make the point, young man? Right, soon after that, they said Pius was cleared. I have no difficulty with Pius being cleared. But the scandal has not ceased to have occurred. That scandal that brought many people. Pius, please keep quiet and right, not That talk. embroiled this nation in such a monumental shame, an international and diplomatic shame. That scandal has not been cleared. Right? We took several people to Australia that were not qualified to be there in the name of sports. At the end of the day, nobody, Pius has been cleared. No, the minister has not been brought into book. The crime continues to linger, yet the culprits are not to be found. Do you understand? Look, there was the issue of Kroll and Associates involving the president's senior advisor or presidential advisor, who was one time a senior minister. Kroll and Associates became an issue, leading to the Auditor General then, Domilevo, asking Osafu Mafu to refund or to be surcharged, that returned the money for no work done. At the end of the day, Dom Levo had to suffer his job for Osafu Mafu to stay and for the, the crime to be cleared by the new Auditor General that there was no crime committed. These and many others point to the fact that, look, any time these investigations are done, everybody watches it. Mr. President has simply become a house of clearing, clearing every appointee of his, because in doing the right thing, these appointees, in the view of the president, will go to undermine his government. What Stephen Adai said is nothing less than what the minister himself said. At the time the minister said, he failed to go to Uyoko. He failed to call in the appropriate investigative authorities to come and deal with the work. Look, beyond just the award of contract is the payment of contracts. How are payments done? Have you not heard the cries of many contractors that they have finished their jobs? And what they have asked them to do is that they tell you to go to a certain bank. We, the ministry, cannot pay you. But when you go to the bank, the bank can pay you and we later pay the bank. Right? Governments owe you. Government directs you to go to a certain bank. What interest does the bank government have? That you go to the bank, the government then pays the bank, for the bank now to discount, you go to discount your, 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 your contract certificate before you are paid. How is that done? So it is not just the case of the award, but also the modus operandi of the payment. That, you know that. You know that. It is worse than corruption. Please refrain it is from worse than corruption because it is the government now that has officialized corruption because they now go to the bank to go and take their cut. So they will not take the cut from the contractor. When you go there, you go and you have to discount because the full value. Will you stop there? No, Pius, allow him to land. You made a lot of statements which required interjections, Pius, but nobody interjected. So, okay. so you be quiet. Pius, you are no longer our one. boss on the studio. I think I over-respected you by saying that you are the boss of you. Even if it's for one. That's not a fair statement to make. But Bernard, you go on. His microphone is off. So, cannot so hear evidently, go on. evidently, look, the magnitude of corruption in the government, the magnitude even as proven by the minister himself in the statement of August 23rd, 24th, it's evident that look, the TV within this government is legendary. And, 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 and so when Professor Stephen Adai comes to talk about it, and it's only citing the road ministry, there are many other ministries that if we decided to go into, when contractors are selected with complete your job Bernard. and you select who Bernard. should be paid and who should not be paid. Bernard. That itself is thievery. Iyoko is set to investigate this matter. Are you saying that it is not enough that Iyoko is going to investigate this matter? What would you rather the government do right now? Well, I have told you that the minister said officials in his, government, uh, his ministry are thieves. 
Are you not aware the minister said so? You, you have said he said that. In are August. you not aware the minister said? You have said he said that. In no, August. are you not aware? But, TV Three was I'm, the one that, that publicized you this more widely. Importantly, the reason we are having this conversation is that after the and so were made, and so Yoko Stephen Adai has made, and I'm very happy that Professor Stephen Adai will go to Yoko. Mm -hmm. To go and, and answer questions and answer the questions or assist and the probably even add more. Mm -hmm. I wish that the Yoko investigations would have been made public so that we will see the public investigations and pronouncement. There are contractors that will be willing to testify to indicate how they got their contracts, how when they completed their contract, they were asked to go to certain banks and then they went and then they are they are, they are, they are, they are contract certificates were undervalued. Let, let's change your microphone with that one that just came. Yes. <laughs> Pius didn't do anything to the microphone. So you think that this is a, a step in the right oh, direction it, or it not? Is, it is probably too late, but it is right that we start these things because the number of thieves within the ministry, the number of thieves within this government, you cannot count them. These are allegations. These are not allegations. These are allegations. A minister for rules say that there are thieves in his, his These ministry. These are allegations. Should I send you the story? You know what? Be because because uh, no, we agreed. Oh, no, we must have at least I mean, two, two minutes response. No, it's um, important. Unf unfortunately, oh, no, no, no. no. Producer. It's, it's very unfortunately, that we are very, very unfortunately. Why are you jittery? Why are you jittery? Very unfortunately. Producer, we cannot do don't want to talk. I, I think Why? in all fairness, we'll continue two, this conversation another day. Oh, because we have then, exactly the, 13 minutes no, to I wrap up this segment. For just, I spoke for just five minutes. I spoke for 10 we minutes. We haven't spoken about our humanitarian crisis, which is on our hands. We will speak about that. That's important. I just want two minutes. I know how you feel. I know how you feel. No, no, no. I know how you feel. He's jittery. He doesn't want me to respond. No, no, I, but I just need two chi. minutes. I he's beg you. <laughs> just but two minutes. No, Malik, if I need two minutes, that's two minutes I'll for I'll address everyone. one situation. No, just no, one situation. I, we can't do that. The NDC will produce let, the show let, let us talk about our humanitarian he, crisis. He doesn't want us to speak about it. Then you start. Let's talk about our humanitarian crisis. You have all been there. I think, Bernard, I saw your videos go out first about being there. Um, so you are you are the first to visit. Which he's, of the areas happy. have you visited? He's happy that I didn't respond. He's, okay. he's happy. It's, it's what okay. is happy? Happy about what? You've made him happy. You've made you his day. For ben longer, you he's happy I didn't respond to the reckless man. comments he made. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, Malik. I understand when your elder you. is but, talking. But I, I understand when your elder you, Malik, is talking, you people Chief. must but talk. But let's talk about let's talk about um, talk. our brothers and sisters who have been badly affected by the. All right, Pius. It's okay, Bernard. Where did you visit? He's escaped narrowly. We visited. So he's happy. We visited. Take note that I didn't say I visited. We visited because it was the Arise Ghana, Arise Ghana. and right. Accra FM that chose to visit on Sunday. And on Sunday, we were fortunate to meet the coordinating team of the three ba uh, tong, th okay. three tong, uh, three tongs in Sugakope at the assembly. Okay. There were 13 chiefs there. There were also the three MPs and the three DCEs okay. that had met to review how far they have come with the situation in the Tong areas. So you had South Tong, North Tong, and Central Tong represented. And so we met with them. From Sugakope, we moved to New Abakpa, where the entire Abajwe island, the entire residents in that island had to come to New Abajwe, a New Abakpa, to come and probably find shelter. It is called New Abakpa because the original Abakpa 60 years ago, 1963, was flooded by this same Akosombo Dam. Then we moved to Adidome, at the Adidome Agric Institute, where it has now become a refugee camp for citizens of Ghana who have been washed away by the water. It's a displaced people's camp. Well, you choose it because the circumstances they find themselves is worse than people who are fleeing war. And I can tell you this, some people had only their clothes, some women had only their clothes on that is the only property they have. I'm not sure that refugees find themselves in that situation. I'm talking about what I have experienced. Then, of course, we moved to the islands. We did not just stay within the landed areas. We took the trouble and the risk 
to sit in those wooden boats to go into the 13 islands in Mafi Devime. And these are new islands. They are artificial islands. The old islands have all been swept away. And so in new, in, in Mafi Devime, if they show the video, you will see that as we were in a boat crossing, we were actually on a third road. A third road has now, you cannot use yeah. vehicles. That is how the whole communities have been taken over. Yeah. People houses were completely submerged. Yeah. Nothing, no life. And relief items cannot even cross to them. Right? The situation is such nasty, such terrible and horrific that you saw people who for two days, kids had not eaten. In some of the instances, when we took some of our cereals and managed to cross with them, and the kids were crying instantly, we had to just mix it with water for the kids to eat in new Bapa. That is how terrible the situation is. Given these conditions, that we don't have sufficient boats to even carry relief items to them, the Ghana Navy and the Ghana Armed Forces combined have delivered only eight boats. It would have been appropriate to declare a state of emergency so that other countries like Togo, like Cote d'Ivoire that are nearby can easily send in boats to come and assist so that we can help in the full distribution of these things. Government is failing. See, I say that it seems that President Akufado is deliberately ensuring that the people go through this trauma. Sorry? President Akufado is deliberately ensuring that the people go through That's this trauma. That's an unfair comment. I have not on, come on, here to on, speak on, fairness no, to you. I've come here to speak truth. Well, on to what speak basis truth. are you saying this? Politics is for the good. You are in that office as National Youth, Chief Executive of the National Youth Authority because of politics. Don't respond and to so, bias. And it's so if politics, were, if politics were not good, but I'm saying that Pius, partisanship. Please, please stop speaking. What, Pius, what, what, Pius, what President Akufado is doing is not politics, it's partisanship. <laughs> President Akufado has moved beyond politics and has gone to deep partisanship. Because see, if you listen to even the pronouncement of the president when he went to... When he visited. Visited. It will tell you that the president in this time of crisis, calamity, of significant proportion, was talking about you don't vote for my, me and my party, but I know that in future you vote for me. When people are, 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 are in distress, you are thinking about a future vote. You should be worried about the pronouncement of the president. So if there is anything partisan, not political, you should be telling President Akufado to desist from such pronouncement, particularly in times of crisis yes, like but this. I, don't you think we should also desist from no, pronouncement? No, I have not said anything. I'm saying that the actions of government, uh -huh. listen to me, uh -huh. and probably because you have not visited these type of areas. Me? No, because if you go Man to places... Brother, I've been there three times. You, did you carry, were you able to carry food to yes, the in, in I, Italy? I was in my first Inquisito camp for two days. That was the camp. I'm saying so that was I've the been camp. To these areas. I've will visited you, these areas and I've sent a lot will of you be talking? items personally to them. Don't forget but, that I am Bernard, the first to speak on this but, matter. Uh, Bernard, and I will do to you what we are doing. Speak, we see that some kind people are bringing I, I have seen that and I'm, I'm very elated donate. about it. So you it. can also bring yours if you're watching us on television. We're very grateful. Listen. But Bernard, I, I'm hoping that no, this conversation no. will help our viewers realize the need... To precisely what I want to do. To precisely to what I so want to do. So let's not make it politic, political or partisan. I am political. Yes, I am not partisan. Not this conversation I am political, one. but I am not partisan. Okay. Unlike President Akufado, who has been partisan. This matter is a political matter. Because politics is, is supposed so? to deliver good to our society. Mm. Anything that is contrary to that, it's not politics, it's something else. And so to the extent that the VRA could not have taken a decision to spill the water without informing the president and the national security. And they knew, as VRA himself, itself has come to say, that they knew the volumes of water to be spilled. And they knew exactly the consequence of that action. Yeah. And the VRA started telling people that evacuate to higher grounds. If I have my only house, 
I have no other place, and you come and tell me that you are going to cause havoc to me. What do you need to do? You need this guy. I don't impossible. understand Pius's behavior what this morning. This is from passing comments when other people are talking. Because when you are talking, we accord you the same Let respect. The so, so, so just does this does this from passing comments? If okay. All right. Well, Bernard. he is a Voltarian, and I'm sure that the people of Volta region who are afflicted and are in that difficulty will know that for partisanship, Pius doesn't want their situation to be brought to the fore for national and international attention. Right? Clearly, These guys are amazing. clearly, the spilling of the water mm -hmm. was well thought of. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you provide temporary camps for the people as shelter That's to contain them? Question. You failed to do so. Now that the disaster had occurred, you are now going around saying that you are giving them relief agencies and you are giving uh, relief items and what have you. VRA knew that people would be displaced. Did they put up any camp? When we met with the coordinating team in Sogakope, and that's sometimes what I find very disturbing of the media, the chief said that the situation in which they find themselves, they were pleading with the vice president to allow the people to move to the Sagleme housing scheme for the time being. Because this water will not recede in the next six months. And that when the water is no longer being spilled, they, it will become stagnant. And that is where the full ramification will appear. It's actually currently stagnant. Right. So clearly, no action has been taken. You have that place. It is for the state. That place, as I've said, will become a five-star hotel to the people given the current conditions that they find themselves in. Yeah. Why is government not doing anything about it? You have more than 50,000 people displayed. Government response is only to 6,000 of them. You have gone around more than 50,000 displayed. We have about 30,000 and above. We're, you, that we, is what you have reported. That, I have gone report. to the chiefs. Let me give you a chief that you can contact. The chief of New Bapa is Toby Kofi Tosu. He said, and some of your media houses come here, that they have in excess of 50,000 people displayed. New Bakpa. <laughs> not only in New Bakpa, he's talking about generally that they have over 50,000 people displayed. Government response is just 6,000. <laughs> NADMO is inadequately resourced. So when VRA comes to tell us that they are going to deal with, liaise with NADMO, not more that their budget has not been released by the Ministry of Finance. What are they going to do in this crisis? So it is on the face value of all these things that I said that President Akufuado, in his partisanship, is putting more difficulty on the lives of the people that have been afflicted by the deliberate action of the government because VRA cannot just get up willy-nilly and say that we are going to spill water, knowing the full ramification to the state without the knowledge of President Akufado, without the knowledge of the National Security Minister and all. What have they done in response to the situation? Bernard, I, I can tell you're very passionate about this matter, as all Ghanaians are. But like I said, I'm hoping that this conversation would encourage people to see the need to assist and donate and bring if, in if items. If the president, for instance, declared a state of national emergency, it will do you know, do you know that bilateral partners it will bring increase in more. support for the people? Yes. Why is the president not doing so? Okay. Why are they not acquiescing to the people's demand that they should move to Sagleme housing? Okay. Why is it that they I'm have... I'm sure Pius has answers for us when he speaks, but I'll, I'll have Malik um, oh, speak I first. I started first. Okay, now oh, Malik, why are you attempting to produce our I show today? I think I owe you a certain last word. Yes, so a, a certain you last word. So I want you to talk and then I'll come back to you. Why, why, you don't want the last word that I'm offering you. Pius. Pius. Are we? <laughs> Interestingly, <laughs> Pius feels the same way about you. I'm not aware that. Uh, Pius. No. Nah. Which to of the, the best, areas? Which of the areas did to you? To the visit? best of my knowledge, you are still in charge of this show. I shall accord you the needed respect and cooperation. Which uh, areas did and, you visit? And, and I think that. Again, let me commend all media houses, and I want to commend TV3 for the yeoman's job that you are doing 
attempting to galvanize the people of Ghana at a time of need. This is a national disaster and a disaster it is. We must refrain from this desperate, this desperate and shameless attempt to score political points. It smacks of saddest tendencies. We want to take advantage of the sufferings of the people in the name of politics, what, and what not just politics, that? in the name of just wanting to get into political office. I don't understand. I'm saying that it is a shame. You were distracted for a moment, so you didn't pay attention. What did you say? I said that I commend TV3 yes, we heard for that attempting bit. to galvanize the people of Ghana, irrespective of their faith, irrespective of their politics. To galvanize us as a people mm -hmm. because you understand that together we stand in this important moment of grief mm -hmm. of our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But what I find, for want of better expression, quite irresponsible if you ask me, is an attempt to score political points. By to the extent that comments are made. If there is a political game, there must be political points to be scored. Bernard, please stop To talking. the extent that on national television, the suggestion can be made that the president is deliberately putting the people affected through this distress. The president caused the rains to fall. The president caused the Bagri Dam to be spilled. The president caused the high tides in the ocean that are preventing the regular flow of the Volta River into the sea. Because the of your level of interjection, Bernard, Bernard, Bernard. you did not understand that it Bernard. is the actions and pronouncement of the president Bernard and the Mona. vice president who would go Bernard to Mona. who will go to the can affected people. Can you please please. microphone for me, please? How can when they you, take it from me? When you were talking, we I kept thought that quiet. it was good, so I wanted to give him a taste of what he was doing. I assured it's, him. It's not good, and it's distracting us from Thank having you. a smooth conversation. And I noticed, time he should. And I noticed now, from time to time, when I made interjections, my microphone was off, and you made that point. Bernard's yes. microphone is still on. It's off now. Go so on. we should be consistent. Go on, go on, Ben. Um, I can talk your so I am saying that all these ones, the president caused the rains to fall. The high tides in the ocean, the president caused it. Sometimes we make mockery of ourselves on national television when we get this desperate and we get this low. It's surprising. I want to commend the people for their steadfastness. It's a difficult moment without that. Where did you visit when you I went? visited the Sojaman constituency and district. What did you see when you I've been to went? Kudikope. I've been to uh, Sedom. I've been to Abume. I've been to Beji. I've been to Chichokope. What were your Look, observations? the people of a Sojamine, and I'm sure the people of the other districts are suffering. Houses have been pulled down. I'm glad you mentioned houses. There have been calls for the government to consider relocating the displaced people to Saglame. I'll come to that in a bit. It's, it's one of the key points that we'd like to talk about. No, you you, you saw it. that the houses were submitted. I've seen, I've, I just said it to you. All right. I've seen that the businesses of people Fish farmers, are people who had cages on the river, mm -hmm. doing their legitimate business of fishing. The tides, the, the current, the heavy flow of the water has washed all those uh, ashore. People cannot feed. And as a responsible government, the government moved in immediately, immediately. As we speak to you, an interministerial coordinating unit has been put up, headed by the chief of staff. NADMO is always on the ground. The Navy is on the ground. Military is on the ground. The VRA has just put aside 20 million emergency, unbudgeted, put it at the disposal of the people. 40 million US dollars has been redirected from the Ministry of Finance to mitigate the sufferings of the people in terms of their agricultural outputs. This is a natural disaster. Really? It is. Really? You are not aware. You don't know. That it's a natural disaster. So your, 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 your understanding of the whole concept is the beginning of your problem. 
the understanding of the problem is your is, is your problem. Now we heard about so, the money. So, so, we heard so, about the money that so, have been dispersed. So, 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 but we the uh, money could have been raised before. Bernard, do you understand Bernard, the concept of a disaster? Bernard, ah, why Bernard, this guy, Bernard, 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 please, please don't, don't, don't uh, this is national television. Oh. This is this is this is national television. Oh. We, we cannot hear him on TV. So yeah, but this is national television. But you stand the risk of embarrassing yourself. The people are watching. The money is descending. People are watching. Bernard. Mona. You wanted it to be so German. Can, you, people are can you please, so German, uh, Bernard? TV. Speak, you speak. Bernard. You wanted it to Bernard. be so German TV. You speak. This is national TV, and of course, it cannot be so German TV. So you are done. No. Can I go now? Pius. When you go and you go wrong, I'll come back. Pius, the monies that have been disbursed. Can you tell us exactly what these monies are being used for? And for relief. Relief. What, what sort of relief? All forms, like what you're doing now, provision of food, but provision when of. Went, when you went to the on on ground. Did you, I mean, you appreciated the problem as it was. Yes. Did you see the relief items or relief supports that this, for example, 20 million that has been released has been used for? Well, it is a, it is a work, it's work in progress. At the time, I visited way earlier. Before the money came. I'm not sure whether before or after, but the point I'm making is that the distribution of relief items is an ongoing process. Yes. Yesterday, we all saw on national television, we saw in the news, the volumes of donations and relief items that were distributed to the regional coordinating houses. Yes. And the regional coordinating houses will use the district assemblies to distribute them. But we have seen the, the distribution of relief items in some of the West Heat areas like Mepe and Co. Yes. So indeed, I have seen on the ground for I, myself. I'll tell you what. And personally, personally, I've also been distributing relief items. Well done. And that is why, and that is why I commend, that is why I commend TV3 for wanting to galvanize us. Because you see, to take the attitude that only the government should resolve these challenges can be a little yes. uh, problematic. And, and that's everybody. why everybody is helping. But the most basic need of the people right now, in my opinion, aside getting clean water, is housing. A lot of them are settled in classrooms, and it's been over a week now. It's, it's over two weeks now, actually. Without windows. And they are in classrooms which are not made for residential purposes. They are not boarding houses. They are day schools. Some of them do not have windows. I visited about 100 women and children, uh, women with children, on Sunday alone. And even those housing tents are so hot that they cannot be in the tents because the tents are plastic and they literally have to be outside all day. We appreciate the tents, however. But if we have housing which is not inhabited, it's empty, and there have been calls from literally anyone who can call on the government to relocate these people who have been hit by this crisis, which I think and many people think could have been prevented, okay? Why is the government not relocating them? Why are we giving them relief items to continue to stay in the classroom? You are we planning? Do you know of any plan to maybe build houses there for them? Or why are we not hearing anything about a relocation? Now, this is an emergency response. Mm -hmm. There are short-term interventions, there are mid-term interventions, and there are long-term interventions. Mm -hmm. What you're describing, I get the sense that there may be mid-term and probably into the long term. Are you saying it is or you get a sense that I, it is? I have advocated, I have advocated that in the long term, provisions be made for the people who have been physically displaced in terms of the collapse of their buildings. And I know that these are matters that are being seriously interrogated. But these are emergency responses. So things will take due course in due time. In about how much and so, time? And so you are even now collecting dresses mm -hmm. for people who are naked, mm -hmm. half naked. Mm -hmm. And Bernard says, and I agree with him, through no fault of theirs. Mm -hmm. So at this point, we are solving the most pressing needs. And I'm saying that those mid-term interventions are well and in place. They are called for. I agree they are called for. But they will come at their right time. In Costs terms of, are being made. Tiles, in terms of priority, where will you put housing in this situation? No, 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 no. no nah, I think that if you put me on the spot that way, in terms of priority, uh, it becomes difficult. In terms of priority, water may be more, more of a bigger priority today. 
-hmm. Okay, even a place of, of, of convenience. Where will you put housing? No, in terms where will of I put it in terms of what's what in is terms there? Of, because uh, if you, you ask you me where, where you I'll just put mentioned it, I'll put it after water, I'll pressing, put it after clothing, I'll put it after food. The more pressing needs, you said, yes. the more pressing needs are being met, like clothing and yes. so on. And I said that they are mid term interventions. But when you give people clothes to sleep in a malaria infested classroom or a mosquito infested classroom, I beg your pardon, then isn't that still a challenge? No, it is. And so, that is why nobody has said that we have resolved the matter. So and that's why I spoke so, about short to mid-term to long-term. Can you, as you sit here now, yes. give us any idea of a no, timeline? No, I cannot. I, it's not, it's for not. For us to expect. No, I cannot. Because that's one of the biggest calls no, we are I getting. Cannot. You cannot. Okay. I cannot. I'm, All right, I'm, let, but, let's, let's but, listen but, to Malik but, now. But, but you, let's I, listen to Malik but, now. But you see that, unfortunately, I am unable you, to you make the point, the, the point about the levels of government response. We drove away from that. Oh, you've spoken about we, the interministerial no, committee no, no, that has no, been set up. No, 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 no. And that you allowed, and you allowed uh, uh, you have more uh, to add. chief to do what he did. You, you may and add, then you, you started add, your Q&A. I did Q &A. not allow him. You, you gave did, you him did. a microphone. No, you did. You, did. you, you gave did. him a microphone mic, His mic continue. was still on and so on. I'll give but you, I'm I'll give you one minute to wrap up. But I'm saying that. I'm saying that. It is not right. What is not right? That comments like that of my brother and friend, Bernard Mona, be entertained. Again, the politicization did not start even from Bernard. You put on, I see, I stand with Mepe. You did that because of the initial attempt, and I commend my brother Okujato for being responsive. And I want the other MPs in the affected areas to also amplify their problems as much as uh, Okujeto Ablakwa is behaving. I am advised, and I believe same to be true, that the VRA even organized a simulation exercise in a Sojaman, for instance. They did. Stakeholders were invited. The member of parliament who was elected by the people of a Sojaman was invited to the simulation exercise. He can also play a part in the public advocacy, but he failed to turn up at the simulation. The NDC member of parliament for Sojama, he failed to turn up. Now we are crying after the facts. And I'm saying that we are all being led in this manner because of the unfortunate politicization of this matter. People have even suggested that VRE spilled the dam deliberately. People have misconstrued the president's comment when he reassured the people of the Volta region that irrespective of your political leaning, once you are in this dire problem, Counts on me, I will not turn my back on you. I believe that the president ought to actually be commended for, for assuring the people of the Volta region that he is blind to partisan politics, that whether they are NDC or not, he doesn't care. So you think, I think that, that comment was relevant? I am saying to you. You think it, it was a relevant well, nah, comment you at you, that time? You don't feel that it's relevant? I am that, asking that you the president, if you believe that I comment was relevant to you, at that time. I am suggesting to you now that I am comforted by the reassuring words of the president to my brothers in the Volta region, that he is blind to what their political ideology is, and that whether they voted for NDC or NPP, CPP or UGCC, he doesn't care. He will respond to them at the point of their need. I am comforted by that. So, you are not, now so, I'm asking you now, you are not, I, I, I you find, are not comforted. I find your position interesting. You are, no, I'm asking you, now, are you not comforted? Listen to me. I am very comforted. Listen, listen I, when me. I listened to the Pius. president, I said, yes, that's my Pius. man. Thank God for a leader Pius. like this. Because we had similar situations. Pius, calm down. And we were told calm that, calm that down. Who can you down. Calm down. Calm down. Pius. Pius, calm down. Mr. Mahama told us that. Listen, people's homes have been completely submerged. Their lives have changed, maybe forever. Yes. And the president was not able to visit as early as they would have liked. Eventually, he was able to visit, perhaps at the, at, as soon as he could. We can appreciate that. And when he visited, he assured them. One of the comments he made was to assure whether them. Whether he meant it. Um, to be in good faith or not, he said he that assured them. Well, he, he did not mind that even though they didn't vote for him, he will respond. He is here to respond. And you respond. don't find that reassuring? Now, that was a point of concern. Was yes. it very concerning? No, because, but I'm asking you, because, listen, are you not reassured? Listen, Pius. I was. Because in times of difficulty, yes. perhaps what people need it's is reassurance. It's You're right. Say, use not, the word. Now use the word. It's not a point Don't out play to the gallery. Use the word. Speak are. from your heart now. In times and the point of, of grief, people need reassurance. You, you need to keep quiet and let me talk. In times of difficulty, 
People probably do not need to be pointed out what their political leanings are. What they want to hear is how they are going to get help in a time when they're suffering a disaster that they do not deserve, that they didn't ask for, and it's not political at all. I don't think that anyone at that time was thinking, oh, who did I vote for? And does it matter who I voted for that at That is this not time? correct. Now, that is not correct. Perhaps Let me, no, 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 you, are, you got it wrong. No. Before the president made that comment, I listened to the NDC member of parliament for that area, make the allegation that the government will not respond because you did didn't vote for the government. I heard it. Do you so it was that important. Was a necessary comment also. But, but, but you didn't comment. You didn't condemn that. Do you, so it was important. You're talking about the it was important that the president reassured them. Mm. So for me, when you have an MP make the allegation that the president will not respond to you, so it was a because response to the I am MP's saying that whether it was a response or not, in the context that the president spoke, it was reassuring to the people. And that's why when you listen to the Queen Mother of the place, she said that she was reassured by the president's comment. Okay. The Queen Mother said that. So it was a reassuring. Yes. Okay. And I, I think the president ought to be commended for reassuring the people of the voter that he stands with them, whether okay. they voted for him or not. Okay. Okay. I see. Thank you for the explanation. Um, I'll read some comments and then I'll, I'll listen. We'll, we'll listen to um, Helga. Um, I beg your pardon, Malik. Helga sent a message saying that um, Pius is still on TV and he's lying through his teeth. Um, how will 40 million, how will people utilize the 40 million when flood waters have not receded? Um, let us be careful with our utterances. And that's from Helga, who's concerned about how we are going to use this money when the water is not receding. I, I believe the money is supposed to bring relief and support to the people and not to recede the water. Um, but thank you, Helga. We appreciate your, your comment. Malik. Nah, you see, you have, he spoke for 16 minutes on record, and I wish to put that across. You have allowed, celebrated Christmas for Pius. Because you see, when the aged hear any discussion around dry bones, they get jittery and they get tensed. And no matter how they would, no matter the extent they will go to stop that discussion, they will. But it's important that you see one. I want Pius to understand that in corruption exposes, we have mere perception, we have inductive reasoning and we have deductive reasoning. These are three principles I want to put across. One, perception, like he cited in President Mohammed's case. Hey, it's when I sit here and say WikiLeaks said Akufuado is a weed smoker. And by that saying, I go to town and say yes, he is a weed smoker. You cited the Atamil's instance. I sit here and I say WikiLeaks says Mr. Akufuado killed or, or had a hand in his friend's death, and that was how come he married Rebecca. That is perception. That is WikiLeaks expose. If I want to sit here for us to discuss that matter, we will discuss Mr. Gufado being a weed smoker. We will discuss he having a hand in his friend's death to marry his wife. But that is not the discussion. The discussion has to do with the fact that you are a walking colossus of corruption, and you turned yourself into a Goro boy. You turned yourself into a corrupt, a connection man. You took over 200 people to Australia. You thought because you had beaten the immigration in Ghana, the Australian authorities who allowed them to cross. They deported over 200 people in your name, in the name of journalists. When they asked one of the people he did connection for, that, oh, uh, do you know what is a recorder? What is a microphone? The person was standing there, opened their mouth and was looking at them. So they realized that the whole deputy minister like you at the time had reduced yourself into a connection man. An investigation was done in the matter. No, yes. nah, I'm going to oh, have to. I'm going to have to I, I cannot why sit you here. Jittery? For no. this why are you jittery? Why are you jittery? Why would you be jittery? To be spilled out. No, no I'm not going no. to take it. When you were because, talking, no, my you are, you are jittery. You protect me. You are jittery. I'm not going to take it. You think talk is cheap. I'm not going to take it. So you say anything and you get away with it. You have to put it We will talk about this. Because I cannot sit here and discuss that Muhammad is not going to avoid the conversation. That Muhammad is not going to avoid the conversation. Of you corruption, to say you don't want me to tell you that you're crying. You are crying. I cannot you are that. crying. I cannot you want that. to cry. I cannot you want to cry today. You want to cry. Your eyes are red. All right. Your eyes are red. We are going to have to end because we speak of your corruption.
corruption. Can we please tell us yeah, yeah, yeah. how you are walking Josh, how can we send on, on corruption? You are jittery. Please. We're talking, everybody I must go on with this conversation. I must. I must. It's important. Now, an investigation was conducted. Yes, the president went to your Congress at Koforidia, stood on the stage and said, Pius, the connection man, the Goro boy, is cleared. Allow him to resume office. Have you seen the reports of the CID? Tell me. You are here. You are a media person. From where? From your pocket. A report that was cleared at the presidency because you sent over 200 people in connection to Australia. Please. Look, can you stop this guy? Can you stop this guy? Please. Can you stop this guy? Can you stop this guy? Please. Can you stop this guy? You sat here and you spoke about Ford. You Mr. President Muhammad took I Ford. The Ford today is being used by the military. They put a machine gun on it. Corrupt. It was given to the embassy. And you see there, you want to talk about corruption. Why? What is our offense? Your own appointees came out and said, your president, Takufado, is the mother serpent of corruption. Mali, he are, takes bundles in his hands. The they said, Alaji Baumia is a Goro boy Mali. to the extent that before you Mali. sit by him, Mali. you need to pay 200,000. Is this a flat conversation? And you, and when we are you, see, you I'll land on this. I'll land on this. All, you, you all, I, we all, we all I want to say in this matter, is this a flat all I want to say in this matter, is that today, by virtue of the fact that Mr. Akufado has cleared you, and yes, I will talk, but I'm cleared, I'm cleared. Because I'm not corrupt, can you like talk Mr. to this guy? Did you I'm stop this in decent behavior? I'm what kind of misbehavior can we, is this? Can we tell all, you are a like, borrow boy. You I do connection to send okay, 200 right, people well, to Australia. That, the and you want to spoil the show. And you are crying today. You are a corrupt man. You are a borrow boy. And a corruption boy. You send 200 people to And it appears my sound team cannot turn off the microphones for some reason. So we're ending the segment now. We're ending the segment now. Because I clearly cannot bring all of you under control. Let's talk about the flood issues and nothing more. Can we, t if we cannot turn off this microphone, I'm sorry, but we're ending the segment. That's it. Uh, thank you for watching Big Issues. When we come back, we are going to continue our collection of the relief items for the floods. And um, you're watching TV3 New Day. Please stay tuned. <laughs>